Oh, hello, and welcome to How Now. 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 This is How Now. How Now. Hi everyone, this is the third installment of the Healing Sounds. Today we are going to do the sound, hand movement, and meditation on the liver. Find yourself a comfortable seated position. Start with your hands palm up in your lap. On the inhale, we're going to raise our arms over our head, lean slightly to the left, and look up towards the sky. On the exhale, we're going to lower our arms, and we're going to make the sound shh. So on your inhale, raise your arms. You can look up towards the top elbow, and on the exhale, shh. Leave some space in your armpits. Release your jaw. The color of the liver is a blue-green. The emotions are stress and courage, as well as decision-making. The liver is the element wood. It is a green, flexible sprout. It is the ability to choose to take a different path if the one that we're on is not working. It is our ability to adapt. You'll do three rounds of the hand signal, the breath and the sound, and in between, close your eyes, consider these things about the liver. The meditation should take no more than about five minutes. All right, thanks. Hi everyone, Katie Weissman here. You may recognize me from my work with Wooden Cities, Little Cake, The Evolution of the Arm, the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra, the Women of Vivaldi, but I am not here to play music for you. Today, we're gonna talk about dog training. We've all been spending a lot more time at home lately, and like many of us, you may have realized that your dog is a poorly trained asshole who absolutely loses their shit when anyone rings the doorbell. <coughs> With deliveries being a big part of our lives for the foreseeable future, everyone should be teaching and using the command place with their dogs. Well, Rafe has some problems, right? He doesn't really get it. But Emma is now waiting calmly. The, be the best thing to look at for her, I found, is that her ears are back, like they are right now. Um, in time, if you're consistent with this, they will understand that the doorbell or the garage door going up means place, and they will just go there by themselves. You just have to be consistent, all right? If anyone knows how to train cockatiels, though, I would, I would totally take your advice.
And so the concept lyrically to the song is like, kind of like no matter how you live your life as a person, whether you are good or bad, or you make smart decisions or bad decisions, you'll be forced to experience pain and suffering. And it's part of being a human being and being alive. It's like this sort of journey and like that it's all coming for you. They, you know, eventually bad things are going to happen to you. I came up with this basic idea that you have to like let this piece of you go. You have to be willing to suffer this release, like this shedding of the skin or in the sense of the video, losing a physical piece of yourself so you can get on with life, you know? You've experienced this pain, this suffering, and now you, you have to continue on. Things are gonna happen, like bad stuff is gonna come up whether you're a good person, bad person, like no matter how you're dealing with life, things happen and you're gonna lose a part of yourself. There's gonna be like a sense of sacrifice. And I think that we're all, all of our social lives are tooth that we've thrown away or, you know, our ability to collaborate now is a tooth that we've thrown away. And it's just, I think that it's interesting in that way. Like we all had a lot to give up that we didn't even know we were about to give up as well. Who doesn't have dreams about their teeth coming out or? Yes. You know, I always do. And I love a surreal, like, conceptual moment. That's where I feel very comfortable in my, my work in general. And from there, I just love working in monochrome. So I'm just like, let's do this yellow thing. And Lindsay was like, I love like canary yellow. Let's do it. So we just dyed everything and played with just her vibe, which is so bright and like peaceful. And, and then that was a great juxtaposition to like the giant tooth and the blood and the like releasing of something disgusting, being really beautiful and peaceful. So the first part of the ride, the like holding on, just trying to stay on board was just trying to film the thing. It was like Jess said, it was super early in the morning. It was pretty chilly. He's like, okay, so here's the thing. We're going to do some running. It's going to be slippery. There's going to be some snow. Also, you got to do it backwards. John is the best at getting his friends to say yes to doing <laughs> just great crazy shit, like standing outside in the snow for hours in the early morning. But you're good at it, John. You know, it's a representation of years of friendship, years of hanging out, years of working together. And I think that that's where the current situation is creating, a, is creating uh, either opportunities for people to work together in ways that they hadn't before, yes. or to really give everyone a moment to be thankful. One of the hardest pills for me to swallow right now is that I almost never have this expansive, uncertain amount of time where I could create anything I wanted. And I have been in my own way, but not being able to do that with other people and do stuff like this for people who are artists who rely on the collaboration of others. This is a really hard time. Guys, I've been training for this since I was like- I know, this is, this is your like, time to shine. No friends, guitar, bedroom, just, I just, this is it. I wish everybody else was not fucking dying and going through horrible, horrible experiences. But I am straight up feeling very guilty how much I'm enjoying this. Uh, I'm just, this is great. I get to lock down, play music all day. I also have four roommates to hang out with, so I'm not like lonely, you know, and everybody's do, smart doing creative stuff like right now, you know, in their room. I have people I can bounce, like I, I can spend two days in my room working on a song and then come out and I immediately have someone to be like, Hey, listen to this. This is not like I didn't jump the shark to like mall metal or something. Did I like this is still good? Right? <laughs> like this is like I I can't I haven't been alone for too long. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit about you know what you're currently working on in your studio behind this wall here and how the isolation has affected that process. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's kind of interesting actually because, as you know, I've done a lot of different things artistically. I was originally a professional piano player, and um, and then you probably got to know me as an artist doing performance art. The past ten years, I've been writing a lot of um, texts for composers, for li librettos, for operas, and stuff like that. I mean, I, I might just be a dilettante or a kind of renaissance man or just a scam merchant. I'm not completely sure. <laughs> um, so most of my stuff has been very much for creating things which were immediate, you know, were for a gig, they were for a particular thing, they were gonna go out in the world, 
Um, you know, it was all about me basically prancing around on stage, you yeah. know, like here I am <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. doing my thing. So it was all about visibility. Um, you know, being a performer has always been like that. And then these other things were very much about stage shows where there were commissions. And so weirdly, right at the moment where we had to lock down, I, I had this kind of, um, I was already thinking sort of strangely prophetically about I need to withdraw for a moment artistically and do things which have um, nothing to do with circulation. So part of it is 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 kind of great. Uh, and I think that the, the lockdown actually creates um, the confines for a discipline which might have been more difficult to sustain yeah. if I'd just been like, oh, it's sunny, let's go out with Kevin and like, you know, go to Duende and like, I'll get really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, there ain't fucking none of that happening. Um, so I just have to sort of go in there and do it. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm still kind of in this sort of weird space. And sometimes I go in there and it does what, you know, all artists know a studio does. You just get into the zone and then I come out and I, you know, so the constriction creates a sort of freedom. Yeah, for sure. The, there's a lot of interesting speculation happening, you know, internally for a lot of people where they're thinking, how much is what I create based on collaboration? Mm. And how much of what I create is based on some divine inspiration? Where do I place value in, in, in that whole scheme? Right. You know, am I somebody who needs other people to uh, further along my ideas? Mm. Or am I someone who you know, just creates on, like internally and I have so many things that I am working through and that that's my process of, you know, emotional growth and, and things like that. A lot of the kind of artists that I like and a lot of the artists, um, you know, that I've been drawn to in my life are those who tend to go out into social situations just to kind of create the distance from the art so they can go back into it. Yeah. And I think for other people, it works in, in the opposite opposite way. You know, we say all these wonderful things about art, and I believe that, you know, truly, um, it can be social and communitarian, it can be you know, political, it can be, you know, like therapeutic, blah, blah, blah. But I wonder if, you know, uh, part of it is actually sort of a very productive, anti-social kind of thing to do. And, and maybe, you know, like, more people would be happier if they just allowed that. I mean, because you're not really doing anybody any harm. I mean, yeah. you're kind of radically, environmentally friendly in a certain sense because you just don't bother the world at all. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.